and three tea is staying to taste it all. Now, the, you, there's all sorts of things that you don't... Who's vegetarian? One of you's vegetarian. He's, um, he's the close. most serious. And then close. it'll probably go serious. me next. Okay. And well, so, so Taj is going to be the... Taste tester. The taster for us. Okay. Like but we do have some Sorry. veggie stuff. We've got some juice as well. I'm good for so juice. Tyrell, Tyrell, Tyrell. Tyrell. All of, yes, Tyrell? all three of them. <laughs> You're going to have the juice. Okay, Steve, talk us through now, because it's Celiac Awareness Week, so you brought on all this stuff. Yeah, so I've got um, a fresh salmon salad here. That was your microphone making yeah, yeah. funny noises. That's Sorry okay. That. No, that's okay. Fresh salmon salad with herbs, uh, uh, yuzu dressing, a bit of basil dressing as well, so two dressings on that one, uh, and some uh, pumpkin seeds as well. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, What's that dressing? It's a, a yuzu, yuzu juice dressing. So it's like a Japanese lime juice, yuzu juice. That and, and is incredible. Yeah, it's really light. That's so simple and light. Light, now, healthy, fresh. Are you going to, are you going to, um, uh, Taj, are you going to try some salad? Can you eat salmon? No. You don't eat salmon. Okay. But what have you? What's he, what's he got in front of him? Uh, he's got uh, spiced lentils um, with some chili, ginger, balsamic in there oh. as well, uh, with mozzarella, rocket and lemon dressing. Okay, give this a try. like to hear from you. I like the way he's so professional. He's off the mic while he tastes it, and he's going to come onto the mic to tell us. It's really good. Thank you. Really good. Can we just talk about cooking lentils? I tried this week, and they came out sloppy. What was I doing wrong? Uh, overcook them, maybe. Um, well, no, they were, they were pre... You know, they were the organic ones you can get in a carton, and they're pre-cooked, and they, it just says you have to heat them up. And I added, I added some garlic and things. It sort of didn't go into the f- flavour. Uh, well, if they're... If they're well cooked, they've probably already absorbed em- enough liquid, so they might not absorb anything else. So um, I was doing that. that wrong. Is that as good? He's having another mouthful. I usually don't like beans too. This, but you put the right stuff in there. So yeah. okay. there we I'm go. Eating it. Okay, wonderful. Now you've also brought some juices in, All and right. you're going to try the juice. Yes. Now, what are the mixture of juices that you brought? Uh, so we've got. Um, a carrot, ginger, and orange juice over there. Oh. Love. Ju- See, I juice. I love juicing. Juices too. I juice too. How's that one? That's great. That's great. And that's. Uh, I, can, I can take. Can I take this with me? You can have it. <laughs> you can have this it with really love. Good. Yeah. No, this is really. Good. And what's the other juice? Uh, the other juice is a green one. So there's some uh, some kale in there, which is a kind of cabbage. I uh, love with kale. Pear, pear, with pear? And celery and coconut water. Oh, Ooh, give that one a try. Water. Now you'll be very rehydrated from that. Oh, that's good too. Yeah, you de- can have healthy. both. Detoxing. Got them both. Yes, these are. These so, are do you great. juice often then? I do. I, you know, I did it for thirty days. You did thirty days. Yes. Crazy. Wow. Yeah. And I've done five days. I've never done. It's 30. crazy because you feel really, really good, you know, while doing it, and people think you have no energy, but you really do. It is extraordinary, though, because you get all the goodness from it as yes, well. Yes. Yes. And you can taste it. And um, uh, TJ, do do you do you ever eat or <laughs> oh. drink anything? Uh, I, you know, I'm so picky, and I've always been very picky. Yeah, always. Um, I used to figure out ways to feed my dogs under the table without really? my mother knowing, yeah, because I didn't like to eat, but she'd make me sit there until I finished my food. I she got, he he got a special menu, and I never understood <laughs> that. Me and Taj, we had to eat like what was given to us, but for TJ, he had like a special youngest, menu. So I think and it usually was, was like steak and salad. And that, is that what you eat? Pretty not well, now, if you're semi veggie. But, but it's like, salad, I still like. So, um, what do you? No, seriously, what do you eat then? If you don't, if you're very picky. Uh, I'm, I'm very picky. I like fries. I like chicken. I like uh, pizza. And seriously, that's we're almost at the end of the list. Okay, that's not eggs. the healthiest of diets. Really. I know. <laughs> I know. But I love fruit too. Oh, good. I, I don't like vegetables though. We, so maybe what you can do is if you have it in a juice, you're not going to know. I, I know. try to get them to do it. I it have a work. juicer and I, I did and it you one just time. Look at it. And now it's just you know. It's sitting there. It's furniture. How about the kids, though? My kids are bad, too. They have my... my what is it? Ab- yeah, they have my... <laughs> they're very picky as well. So it's all your fault. It is. <laughs> Karma. I- I'll take it. I- it's no, there's no excuses. Well, you'll have to go along to 108 Maribyrn, the hotel there, and because the, and, Steve does all the food. And I love the fact that very quietly, Taja yeah. has been yes. finishing the wow. lentils. Look. It's almost gone. <laughs> I was taught. Yeah, yeah. Nice. finish and this. see. Your mom's what you want. Do you see what's happening here? Me and Todd are eating, and TJ has nothing. There you go. See? Nothing changes. Hold on. Me as well. I've got nothing in front of me either. <laughs> oh, it's because I have to fit into that dress. Um, uh, Steve, thank you very much indeed. Really lovely. And thank it's you. great that you're making things because uh, I know mine's just a wheat allergy, but there are people, a lot of people out there who have celiac disease, and it's a really, really tough thing mm, yep. to have to cope with, and Crohn's disease. And the, the fact that there's a restaurant out there in London that is uh, catering for them is great so steve thank you thank you he's but you know he, well, he was the chef at the ivy at mm. cheekies mm. and you've you've been you've also been a chef abroad haven't you 
Is it? Yeah, it? I worked with um, um, Gordon Ramsay in Dubai a couple of years. Cool. Wow. And America? So, yeah, New York. Mm. Wow. He's been everywhere. Very nice. Thank mm. you very much, Steve. Really lovely to meet you. Thank you. 3T aren't going anywhere, mm. but what they're going to do now is, would you like to introduce uh, Never Felt So Good? Here's your uncle's uh, Sure. Um, this is our, our amazing uncle, uh, his new song. Um, Gerald, anything else you want to no, add? No. You know, I love hearing his voice again on the radio. Um, and I love all the fans and everybody that's smiling about it. And, mm. and you know, people really get a good feeling when they hear it. So. And the new fans. Yes, there's new fans too. So it's 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 great to hear everybody listening to his music and smiling. That was really beautiful. We were chatting away as well, uh, 3T and I, uh, while we were listening to that song. Yes, but it is, you know what, so you were saying that uh, it's, it's brought your uncle to a whole new generation of people. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even after, you know, years after his death. And I can tell as well that, um, TJ, you know, you found that tough to introduce him. I, I, some days are better than others. Yeah. It's so similar with my mom, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I lost my mother earlier and um, when I was young and... There's good days and bad days, and some yeah. days it's just real hard. And I think I'm having a bad day. Yeah, it, <laughs> but I just I love him, and I, the I miss him. And everything. Can you tell what was so special? Why was he such a good uncle? Love. L that's the that's the thing that immediately comes to my mind when I think of him. He just was full of love, and it, he was so different than what the negative media presented to the world. And all he did was fight back with love. Every time he always gave, he gave, he gave, charities, everything. And he did so much that people don't even know about. Because I remember he told us, he said, the real charity is the charity that you give and you do and no one knows about. You mm, know? Absolutely. And, and he did so much for so many people. And, and I remember, I have so many great memories. He would, he would see, watch the news and hear something mm -hmm. and just would sit there and it would kill his whole day. He'd just break down and cry. And it's just, mm -hmm. it would really affect him. And he's mm -hmm. like, I'm going to help them. I got to, I got to help them. And he, he just, he wanted to help. It was love. Always. Why, why do you think that the press got so out of control and it became so negative? I, I think uh, negativity sells. Yeah. It's as simple as that. It gets rewarded. And it gets rewarded. And I think, you know, that it, gets, it gets to a point where it's not even worth fighting because you're kind of feeding into the fire. And, you know, he was private. And I think that it kind of went crazy. Mm. Unfairly. But it went crazy. I love that you've got happy memories of him. Yes. I love. I mean, all my great memories in life. I'd say eighty percent are with him, and I have I have many, and I don't even have a good memory. But I can yeah. hear his laugh, and I can hear mm. stories, and him teaching me things and simple things, you know, about life, not just music, but about life, and and I and I owe him my life in a way. Do you know what's so incredible is that uh, everybody I've ever met who met him, including David Guest, and we talked about him earlier, he, he is barking mad, David Guest, but I do, yeah. I do adore him to pieces. But he said that um, your uncle had the best sense of humor mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just wanted to give love. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. he was yeah. genuine, and that's the thing. It wasn't an act, you know. It was from 9 to 5. It was, I mean, from 24-7, it was him really caring. 9 to 5. Yeah. Yeah. The rest of the time. Yeah. Yeah. I caught myself. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was 24 hours a day. He really did care. And that's rare, and people don't know how to handle that. It's funny that you say negativity sells. It does. <laughs> well, we have we have a journalist in our midst here, oh, Andy I do Jones. Apologize. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how okay. did you slip? I, I, only, I only talk about lifestyle things. No, I Andy promise. Jones is our TV reviewer. He's also very much a part of the show. He's part part of the furniture in the nicest possible way. But that's interesting that they say that negativity sells about Michael because I never met Michael. I know lots of people who did, and obviously <laughs> he was their uncle. But it, absolutely, the, the press was negative. I never, I think I've ever read ever read anything positive. Mm. Um, no, no, you're absolutely right. But the, the, the difficulty with with modern journalism especially is it's so far removed from human beings it's so internet based it's you know most of the interviews i ever do are on the phone and then you you don't realize the human cost of a lot of the interviews mm. and things that you write and also it's the, the very nature of the process where i've had things written i've written a story and i've taken lots of love and care making sure it's all accurate and then somebody puts an, an editor puts a top spin on it and then somebody else puts a top spin on it and then you get an article back and you think that's nothing like what mm -hmm. i wrote mm -hmm. and it, it's, it's a dreadful thing and you don't you don't you don't realize the human cost of, of little tweaks lies and and changes like that and and often you know in the press we we 
earlier on we were chatting about how all the trolling and all the all, awful things. Absolutely. I do think that maybe some journalists don't realise that there are human beings underneath mm-hmm. all of that and yeah. some people who tweet all the foul things exactly. and do all the trolling on Facebook. No, absolutely. The, the, the very nature of celebrities is the characters involved become almost like pantomime where it's just like they're, they're movable pieces that you can change around and, and you have heroes and villains and, and the narrative changes but there's a big, you know, there's emotional cost to that and I find mm-hmm. it kind of, I find it quite upsetting me just even when you read picture captions in magazines, women's magazines and, you know, people are sort of, you know, oh, this person's put on weight, this person looks miserable, this person's having a breakup. Hallelujah for saying that. I can't bear it and they always have to put your age as well. I know, we obsessed. Go. The first thing I ask is, what are their ages? And I think it's very rude to us. Do you know what? I had, I had an interview recently uh, about my new TV show, and they called back and they said, you didn't give us your husband's age. Well, well, he's not. <laughs> what? <laughs> you can't use the Crazy. Yeah. No, it's Okay, let's thing. talk television, because Andy Jones, as Andy Jones writes on Twitter, and I love your Twitter feed. Um, oh, do you? Sorry. I, I, always get a bit, I, I always write things on Twitter, and then I forget that, that sensible, lovely people like Gabby are going to read them, and I think sensible. they might be too, too silly and ridiculous. I like the lovely bit you can have. I'm but never that's sensible. That's right. Okay, so uh, The Island. Now, the, I watched this. I thought it... What actually, did you think? Well, I thought it was very interesting. It just felt a little bit set up. It felt a little bit... The Island, if you didn't watch it, was on Channel 4, Monday, 9 o'clock, and it's a bit of a riff on the old Survivor series where they get loads of ordinary men, dump them on a desert island... Just and then men. It's just men, no ladies. It would probably, probably be a bit too complicated if they had kind of relationships and emotions involved with ladies. But um, they, they, they dump all these men on the island, and then, then quickly it revealed that little bits of it were set up. Like, they, they didn't dig their own watering hole. They had to actually have water there for them. The crocodile that they caught and, eat, caught and ate um, was actually a plant by the TV crew. And then some of the men actually knew uh, the survival expert, Bear Grylls, um, who's our favourite UK uh, survival expert, 3T. If you ever lost in the jungle, 3T, call upon Bear Grylls, I tell you. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, they, they knew in advance. And he's, he's maybe a little bit set up. But, but, but I suppose the nature of these TV shows is you need you need to massage the reality an awful, you know, a little bit. Otherwise, well, it's quite I am boring. That, you know, I love Made in Chelsea, which I hate admitting, but I do love yeah, it. And that's great. completely massaged. It is ridiculous. <laughs> it is ridiculous. But also, you don't want to watch a TV show where it's just men digging a water trench for two and a half hours, <laughs> and then them sat there doing nothing. So you've got to kind of get them well, doing things. if it was things. Bradley Cooper and George Clooney, I wouldn't mind. I know. Well, I, I do feel for the ladies. Perhaps there's not a lot of eye candy no, on, the island, I am on the island. Um, I am but that It gave birth to possibly the wettest reality TV star I've ever seen. Scene, Ryan 21 from Stockport who spent most of the time crying and, and being ridiculous. His idea of catching a bird was chasing after it, shouting and throwing a rock at it, which, which not surprisingly scared all the seagulls away. Yes, but but it, there was quite a gripping bit where they fought a crocodile, but the rest of it was basically men stood around scratching themselves moaning. <laughs> which men do quite often. Catfish on MTV. Are you familiar with Catfish on you? The term I know catfish, but oh. I've never seen the TV show. Oh, wow. I, I've mentioned I've this especially for you, but obviously you're on tour the whole time. Catfish is, is on MTV, and I dare say MTV isn't something that Gabby and BBC London Louis just, uh, listeners watch an awful lot of. However, it, it's quite an enthralling... Uh, look at the human condition. Catfish is a dating term where mm. you're online dating and you're, you're kind of talking to somebody you think is quite hunky, quite attractive, and then maybe you're getting to know them over a couple of years maybe and then you find out actually that it's not the real person. you heard about oh, all these no. dating scams. Yeah. And, and oh, that's they, horrible. The, the, the 25-year-old hunky man you find out is actually a 45-year-old divorcee. Yeah, it's really dodgy. Uh, yeah. But it's, it's, re- it's really compelling because these people absolutely believe the narrative of the person they spoke to. There's a brilliant one on the last series where this, this lady had uh, met this rapper on the internet, on a dating site, and he was like, I'm a really famous rapper, and he sent, like, clips of his MySpace or SoundCloud or whatever. Um, and then he was, you know, said, inviting her to shows, and then, you know, at the last minute, he couldn't have her come. Um, and then uh, he was sending her... He sent her $10,000 because she had all these money problems. And it was like, she, he must be real. Right? Wow. $10,000, yeah. right? And then she goes all the way... Through the TV show, she goes all the way across America and meets him. Turns out it's not a hunky 25-year-old rapper. It's, it's a lady. Uh, and she just randomly fell in love with this woman on the internet. And wow. it was a complete lie. And it's the, mo- the, mo- the most gripping part, because you always know it's going to end badly. It always ends oh, badly. I don't know if I want to watch this. They pull up outside somebody's house, like some kind of little red brick house somewhere, and then they have this big reveal of, you know, here she is. And it's wow. never, never the person in the picture. Well, thank you. That's on MTV. What's next? What now are you going to talk about? What do you want to talk about? Food inspectors. <laughs> Should we talk about food inspectors? Food inspectors, Gabby Roslin was on food inspectors. They weren't expecting <laughs> Gabby Roslin's pantries or anything like that, don't worry. Uh, Gab- Gabby was doing a marvellous show uh, called Food Inspectors, 
where they they lift the lid on the grubby catering industry and the truth that's in your real food. I know it's all of three tier drinking juices and squeezes and all these kind of things. Us Brits are far less healthy than that. So <laughs> absolutely outrageous. Walk around Oxford Circuit, you'll see the kind of things that people are eating. I'm getting embarrassed now. Indeed. I'm actually you, getting really embarrassed. Shamefully, Gabby Rosling took away ice cream from children and then gave them cups of lard. <laughs> what was this? <laughs> well, it's just actually showing you the amount of fat. And, and interestingly enough, I think it surprised everybody because that's the one, one pudding I like is ice cream and that the really posh, expensive stuff has... Um, a heck of a lot more fat oh, than the wow. cheap stuff. Uh, uh, so if you're going to eat ice cream, go for the cheap stuff. Wow. Mm. There's not much dairy because there's very, very little fat in that compared to the expensive stuff. And, uh, but there's more this week. We're doing um, uh, uh, yogurt drinks and the probiotics. There are a load of rubbish, those yogurt drinks, Should aren't Wait they? and find out. Sure. They are. I, wait I, I watched see, a TV show see. about them and it wait said and if you see. drink these yogurt drinks, they don't do any good for wait you. Wait and see. You'll have My to see. fridge... By the way, it's on Friday at 8 o'clock instead of Thursday this week. Is Since I've lived with women... Uh, my Women? Friend, How many did you live with? What, what, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> well, sorry. Your girlfriend's going to love <laughs> no, that. She's full of yoghurt drinks off fridge. I can't get my beer in. Anyway, um, next one. Let's talk about... Oh, pray. Congratulations, everybody involved. Oh, as you know, we had John Sim on the show last week. Oh, it was absolutely astounding. Guys, if you get a chance to watch three... Watch it on ITV Catch Up. There's a show. It was a three-parter called Pray absolutely brilliant mm. British drama at its best um, right let's talk about things to look forward to Nat King Cole Afraid of the Dark on Friday yeah. BBC 4 I'm quite a big Nat King Cole fan mm, I love sorry. listening to Nat King Cole um, uh, there's a brilliant documentary on Friday BBC 4 9 o'clock called Afraid of the Dark it was about Nat King Cole's uh, TV show in the 50s and how it almost didn't get funding because they almost took it off air because the advertiser didn't believe that they could have you know that a, a, a show fronted by a black guy could mm. actually make any money mm. which is absolutely dreadful and it Isn't talks it about the country thing that, that actually it's very recent history that's exactly what I was going to say that's not too long ago mm. no absolutely and we, you know we were, there's great kind of Tony Bennett and different interviews and it talks about the racism of the time and it's I found it quite it was just really interesting subject and there's also lots of wonderful Nat King Cole's voice oh that voice is it you just said you love unforgettable the voice like you said is, is amazing it's amazing. Absolutely love it. Uh, now, Mr. Drew's School for Boys. I'm, I like this. Do you like this? Yeah. I love this show. Because yeah. it, 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 it's basically, a, a, there's a breakout TV star from a, a kind of educating, uh, what was it called? Educating Yorkshire. Yorkshire. Educating Yorkshire. Which where is up for BAFTA as they, well. They night. took all these awful kids in this school and made them really well behaved. And it was quite heartwarming in the end because it was kind of bad kids done good. And this guy, Mr. Drew, who's one of the teachers, uh, looks after these kids. And they're the naughty. Like, we've all, we all think that we were naughty as a kid. These kids are absolutely the most blind. I sit there as a guy with no kids and I'm smug about how good a parent I'd be looking at. <laughs> you know, hey, this kid needs to sit down, this kid needs a, a smack on the wrist and all this kind of thing. And he's really ridiculously patient when they're throwing cups of water and calling him every name under the mm. sun. There's, there's, there's five and six-year-old kids on there who are using swear words that I've never even heard of. Wow. But um, it's, just, it's amazing. Um, uh, and uh, I believe that's all I'm going to recommend. Uh, Fargo, Sunday, ch- uh, obviously today, 9 o'clock, Channel 4. Fargo, I, see, I, now I watched the first part... Mm. I, d- I wasn't quite sure what I was watching. I've got a bit I confused. Loved, I love the Coven Brothers film, and I'm going to watch it all uh, in one go. Uh, what I'm doing is I've watched a little bit to make sure I'm going to really like it, and then I know I haven't got time to... I had to go out last weekend, so I'm going to have to record... I've recorded all of it, and I'm going to watch all of it in one blast. It is... Maybe that's the way to do it. Maybe to I watch it. So. Box, box set it. Do you do all that? Because you're on tour and you're out of... Uh, box oh. sets are our friends. So what's <laughs> yeah. your favourite box does. set? Oh, my gosh. Um... Well, now that 24 is back on the air, that um, that's a great box set. I don't know, ba- Battlestar Galactica, you know, that series was great for us. He also likes Buffy. Does oh, he? Buffy. Oh, yeah. I yeah. was trying to stay is away from Buffy because I could talk for that for hours. <laughs> is it because of the storylines or Sarah it's, Michelle Keller? It, no, it's actually, well, a little bit, but it, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's the writing. It's, you know, it's the writing. They had some of the strongest writers and those writers have gone on to do like lost and all that because it was the original the same people it, some of the yeah. writers have gone on to do other things like lost and um 20 some of them did 24 and stuff like that yeah the writers know, yeah. i'm actually going to be honest i've never seen 24 oh you have i to. haven't either so oh, oh thank you, you. thank you goodness to. for that it's great what is everybody gets obsessed by it? It's, it's they, that's a they, sign. they both There's tell me it's the best show they've ever seen. Well, Breaking Bad, though, everyone talks about. Yeah, Breaking, yeah, that's Breaking Bad. That's the next box set. Okay. I actually, yeah. You haven't done it yet? No, I've been holding off. Have you done that? I've, I'm I've very watched. close to the finish, and it's amazing. It's incredible. It's amazing. It's proper. It's one of these things where you you come home. You're like, I'll just watch one episode, and then I'll that's you know I'll do it, and then four yeah. episodes, yeah. and then you're there, and then you're there. 
sat at four in the morning thinking I've got to be up in three hours and you're still watching. Yes. yes. That's, that's what it is. It is. Maybe, that's that, maybe that's, that's just bad. me and my no, antisocial no, no, you're, habits. You're not alone. Hey, that's me that's too. true. Yeah. But I suppose your life is actually a bit like the recent 24 episode where you're like dashing around London. So <laughs> yeah. that's, that's your day today, isn't it? Yeah. You're Jack Bauer. When do you, do you, do you have time to stop though? Do you ever stop? Um, we not- have to we have to try to make time you have to stop you know um that was one of the things our uncle you know spoke to us about is is stopping and enjoying the moment in your surroundings because the first time we were out here we worked so hard we we didn't get to see london or the uk anything you know well, no I'll tell museums you what, or anything after, after the news i'll give you my list of Actually, and Andy's going to be here too. We're going to we'll compile a list over the news. We will All be right. listening to this, but we'll compile a list of the ten things you must do in London. Okay. Great.